All right, welcome back to the second lesson in our series on how to create a game like Zigzag or Zigzag Boom. In the last lesson, I showed you how to set up our game scene. In this lesson, we're going to jump into some code and I'm gonna show you how to create the platform generator. So to get started, the first thing that we're going to do is create a new scripts folder. So I'm gonna right click on the assets folder, go up to create and select folder, and then going to rename this folder to be scripts. Then let's go ahead and create a new c -sharp script. So I'm going to right click, go to create, and then select c -sharp script. And we can rename this to be something like platform generator. Now let's open the script in our coding environment. Now the first thing that we're going to do is create some new variables. The first variable is going to be a serialized field, and it's going to be a private game object, and we'll call it platform prefab. The next variable is also going to be a serialized field. This is going to be a transform and we're going to call it current platform. The next one is also going to be a serialized field. This one is going to be an int and we're going to call this variable starting platform count. The next variable doesn't have to be serialized, but this is going to be an int, and we're going to call it next platform direction. And the last variable I'm going to create will be a singleton of this script. And so I'm going to create a public static then platform generator, and we're going to call this variable instance. This will make it so that we can refer to one single instance of this script from other scripts in our game. From here, I'm then going to initialize our singleton, and I'll do this within the onEnable function. So I'm going to type void onEnable, and then in here, we're going to type instance equals this. Now the next thing that we need to do is create a function to initialize the starting platforms for our game. And so underneath the start function, I'm going to type void, and I'm going to call this function generate starting platforms. Now let's think about how we're going to use these variables up here to generate the starting platforms. Firstly, I have this int variable, which is the number of platforms that we want to start with. And so one thing that we can do is we can create a for loop that will execute this amount of times. We can then use this int variable to pick a random direction for where we want the next platform to be instantiated, whether to the left or to the right. Once we pick a direction, we can then instantiate a platform prefab in that direction with relation to our current platform. We'll then set the current platform transform to be the transform of our last instantiated platform prefab. And that's how I would go about generating the starting platforms. And so now let's type that all up. And so inside our generate starting platforms function, let's start with a for loop. And we can type int i equals zero semicolon i is less than our starting platform count variable semicolon and then i plus plus then inside this for loop the first thing that we're going to do is randomly pick a number between 0 and 1 and then save it into our next platform direction variable and so i'm going to type next platform direction and set it equal to random dot range and we're going to pass in 0 and 2. Now the reason why I'm passing in 0 and 2 and not 0 and 1 is because the random dot range function normally works with float numbers and it'll pick a random number between the first parameter and up to but not including the second parameter. And since I'm passing in integers and not floats, 
and the returning value is being saved into an integer variable, all of the decimal values are just going to get chopped off. So now that we have a binary choice for which direction we want the next platform to be instantiated in, we can create if conditions based on this value. And so I'm going to type if next platform direction is equal to zero. Now to do this, we can call the instantiate function. And the first parameter is the object that we want to instantiate, which will be our platform prefab variable. And then we need to pass in the next position for where we want this platform to be instantiated. And that's going to be in relation to our current platform. And so I'm going to type current platform dot position. And then we want to add on vector three dot right times two. Now the reason why I'm multiplying this by times two is because vector three dot right will return a vector three of one zero zero. And since I increase the scale of our platform by two in the X and two in the Z, we need to multiply this value by two so we don't have any overlapping platforms. Next, we need to pass in the rotation, which is just going to be quaternion.identity. And this will instantiate a new platform at the next position to the right. But now what we need to do is update our current platform variable. And to do this, we can just save whatever we instantiate into that variable. And so I'm going to type current platform equals and then our instantiation. But you'll notice that we're now receiving an error and that's because the instantiate function returns a game object value. And so we need to get the transform of that game object. And so here at the end, I'm going to type dot transform. Now we need to handle the condition for if our next platform direction variable is not equal to zero. And so I'm going to type else and then we can just copy this line of code and paste it into our else statement. We then need to modify the position that we're instantiating this platform so that it is not vector three dot right, but instead vector three dot forward. Now the reason why we're using forward and not left is if you remember, we turned the camera to be 45 degrees in the Y axis, and that'll give our game somewhat of an isometric view. And so from the perspective of the player, the X axis of world space will be going up and to the right and the Z axis will be going up and to the left. So now what we need to do is call this function and we're just going to call it right in our start function. Once you've done that, let's go ahead and save our script and go back to Unity. Once back in Unity, we need to create an empty game object to hold our new platform generator script. So I'm going to go to the Create drop-down menu in the Hierarchy window and select Create Empty. We can then rename this to be Platform Generator. We can then drag on our Platform Generator script to the inspector. I'm also going to move it up in the hierarchy so that it's not in the middle of our platform objects. And we need to initialize these variables. So for the first variable, we can go to our Prefabs folder and then drag in the Platform Prefab. For the current platform, we want to grab the last platform from our hierarchy. And then for starting platform count, let's set that number to 100. Now we can go ahead and test our project and see how our platform generator script works. And there we go. We now have a completely random path for our ball to travel down. And just so that you know it's random, let's restart the play mode. All right, so there we go. We now have our platform generator script working. In the next lesson, we'll go over how to generate more platforms as the player rolls down the path.